Van Gogh's painting achieved its final maturity as he himself has been subjected to frequent and increasing nervous attacks. He reached the stage of expressive desperation that made him shout out in line and colour all his feelings of bitterness and reject any sort of restraint that might impose more order, more reflection, more patience. It seems as though he sensed the end was near and he painted at speed, throwing himself furiously into his work, producing an amazing number of paintings, particularly when one considers how often he was incapacitated by illness. Van Gogh's soul explodes in a scream, and it seems as though his entire life experience has been poured into the painting. The bitterness that he felt about all the things he would have liked to have done, but was not allowed to do. The admission of his solitude, and the certainty that only art could recompense him for all his disappointments. Jackson Pollock painted with forceful, rapid, impulsive brushstrokes, or by splashing the paint directly onto the canvas. Pollock's technique of pouring and dripping paint is thought to be one of the origins of the term action painting. With this technique, Pollock was able to achieve a more immediate means of creating art, the paint now literally flowing from his chosen tool onto the canvas. He used hardened brushes, sticks, and even basting syringes as paint applicators. Here, impediment is a means of freedom, and the artist's beautiful, central ambition is satisfied, and we are satisfied. We feel we can be ambitious to be free like that. Broadly speaking, Judy Miller works from within a conceptual painting framework, an increasing dialogue between architecture and painting, between three-dimensional space and painted surface. Her process of application and erasure from wiping and scraping the paint off the surface, resulting in leaving marks and traces, directly indicating the interventions made by the artist herself, reflect ideas about construction and deconstruction. We are able to observe the relationship between before and after, revealing the history of raw gestures throughout the work, thus creating an ongoing sense of movement and flux. The basic premise of Max Gimlet, and I quote, At my best, I think I am pure audience, and when I paint, I think I am a medium for the whole situation that is given to me, rather than me generating it. So I'm receiving, it's passing through. Max Gimlet has an extensive collection of brushes, mops and rollers with which he makes his marks. Quote, I work fast. I work in bursts of one point, very sharp concentration, and then rest, and then have another burst or set of gestures. These gestural paintings, with their drips, splatters, and swipes of paint, strongly ground Gimlet in the tradition of American abstract expressionism, yet at the same time maintain a link to Eastern calligraphic practices. There is a performance aspect to the creation of the work. Quote, I am committed to the Buddhist idea of the not-self, and in that sense I try to suspend my judgment and float. As an intuitive thinker, my imagery comes to me as I command. As a whole unit, the mind is cleared, an image arrives, 
and I execute this quickly.